Hello, welcome to 2021 and to CS472, Digital Music Processing. My name is Chris Traley and I'll be the instructor for this course. If you haven't noticed, I renamed the title from the horrible title that was in the catalog. This describes the course much more succinctly. But so I just want to briefly run through a couple things in the course. Um, and then I'll have you go through this module and do some more things yourself. So for those of you who don't know me, I am starting my fourth semester at Ursinus. I started August 2019. I'm primarily a computer science professor, but I also cross over into math quite a bit. So I'm kind of in between the two. And I actually grew up in the area. I went to Upper Dublin High School. Um, I did my undergraduate degree at Princeton in electrical engineering, computer science. Did my graduate degrees at Duke, my master's and PhD in electrical engineering. So that's me in a nutshell. I just moved to East Falls in August as well in Philadelphia, fun fact. Okay, but before I go into too much more of the journeying on about the syllabus, let me quickly just run through the topics in this course. So very fortunate to be able to run this course. It's a topic that's near and dear to my heart. I do a lot of research in this area. So I tried to come up with a syllabus that would give you a broad enough interview that you could show up at one of the premier digital music conferences and you would understand what was going on in one of the poster sessions. So that's sort of my framing of the learning goals for the course. So if you're on the course webpage and you go to the menu and you click on schedule, it'll take you to this page, which you should refresh often. I have all the topics here now. So there are six units. Um, and I'm pretty happy with the topics. I may, you know, reschedule certain things depending on how long we take. But we'll start off by talking about time domain audio processing. So we'll start with this right away on Wednesday, actually. And it's, okay, look, digital audio is just a big old array, one dimensional array. So what can you do by manipulating those arrays to synthesize sounds or to analyze sounds? So we'll spend a good amount of time on this. The first assignment is going to be on something called Resave Beats, which is a pretty neat way of creating sounds that you can compose with. The second assignment will walk you through two different other synthesis techniques to create sound from scratch. One of them is called Car Plus Strong, where you can make a plucked string. Um, this is actually a 173 assignment. So we're going to go a little bit further than that in this course and also talk about something called FM synthesis. And this is a big deal in the 80s, you'll recognize the timbre of the sound that we make there. Um, and in class, we'll be doing lots of stuff about the basics of audio and perception of audio, pitch, dynamics, um, things like that. We'll talk about echoes and something called convolution, which is not as bad as it sounds once you break it down. Okay. So we'll start off with that. But then we're going to put on our Fourier glasses. So there's a different way to look at audio in something called the frequency domain. So we're going to learn something called the discrete Fourier transform, and that's going to unlock a whole new set of tools. And in this unit, actually, the assignment is going to be on a vocoder. So making like a singing lion or a talking guitar is, is what we're going to do. Um, and you might have also heard like the computer voice, that kind of thing. So you'll be able to do that by the end of this unit. Um, after that, we're going to move on to what are known as audio features. And this is where we're going to transfer a little bit more from the synthesis side to the analysis side. So we're going to think a little more about, well, what can a computer tell us about musical audio at a high level? Yes, it's an array of a bunch of samples, many, many samples. But can we zoom out and say something a little more about the audio? So we'll do a couple things in this unit. Um, one of them in the assignment will be beat tracking and tempo analysis. So you'll teach a computer how to tap its proverbial foot to the beat. Um, you will also, in class, we will talk about how to estimate pitches. We'll start doing that. Something called chroma. And we'll also learn how to align different audio pieces. So actually, those who are taking algorithms, there's a little overlap here. 
with what we're doing. You'll, you'll repeat this dynamic time warping algorithm in, in 371 as well. That's your reward for taking two classes with me this spring. Okay. Once we've built up that background, we're going to move into something called content-based music audio retrieval. So we want to do things like, can I identify that a particular audio clip is a different version of another audio clip? So sometimes people call this cover songs. So if I'm in my cover band and I play a Beatles cover, can the computer tell me that it's a Beatles cover? So we'll learn how to do that. And this whole unit's going to be centered around an assignment on that, which will actually turn into a competition. So this is a big research area of mine. One of the main things I work on in music, digital music, is cover song and version identification. So we're going to set up a little competition in the class to see who can get the best performance with their program on identifying cover songs. But we'll also talk about other problems in class as you're working on that. One of them is we'll be able to identify artists. So which artist was most likely to have um, performed this piece? We'll learn about something called audio fingerprints, which is how the Shazam algorithm works. So now it's not, not a different version, but, but you're looking for the exact version of a song that's playing in the background at your local coffee shop. And all you have to do is hold up your phone and within seconds it can give you that. So actually this turns out to work a lot better than any of the cover song algorithms because we're looking for exact matches. So I'll teach you some of the tricks on how that works. Then we're gonna move on to pitch tracking. And so we're going to track sort of how high or low somebody is singing, for example. And we'll use this to implement an auto tuner in class. Um, so we'll be working on some of the steps for the auto tuner in class, and you'll be working on other steps of the auto tuner for homework. And at the end of this unit, we'll put it all together and hopefully we'll <laughs> maybe come up with some kind of class auto tuner composition or, or our own covers of, of T-Pain songs or something like that. Okay. Then the last unit is going to be on matrix algorithms and musical, musical audio processing. So um, I'll teach you what you need to know about matrices, but they unlock some pretty cool applications like um, unmixing. So that's, that's what the, there could be two assignments in this unit. The first one's gonna be on unmixing. So the reverse of what a studio engineer would do. So a studio engineer takes a bunch of recordings like you know, the guitar tracks, um, the vocal track, the drum track, and mixes them together. Um, when you get the final product, it's all mixed together. You might want to just separate out the drum track and listen to it. That turns out to be much harder than it was to mix them together in the first place. But I'll show you some algorithms that work surprisingly well to do this blind unmixing. So, so with no knowledge about what instruments are even there. Um, just guess how many instruments there are and it will create that number of tracks for you. Uh, and this unit will also go through um, something called segment boundary detection. So, so learning when the song is about to transition to a new section. We'll do something even more general, which, which is clustering um, music structure. So, so we'll learn that, that a course, that a um, musical audio file has a bunch of repeating sections like chorus, verse, um, and things like that. And with whatever time is left, I'll talk about some of my research and, and possibly teach you a little bit about neural networks, which is, is a pretty hot area right now in all your research. So that's the course of the nutshell. In a nutshell, um, those of you who have me in 371 and see my intro video there, you might notice, okay, that intro video had a little more pictures than this one. That's because, you know, this, this is a class on audio. <laughs> so it's a little harder to come up with pictures, although I did have some on, on the page on the intro page here, but I don't, I could play audio, but I don't want to do that because I don't want to give everything away. So, so we'll go through it sl um, slowly as we go through the course. And I think it'll be a lot of fun.